Hello folks, welcome to CS412 Software Security. This is the speedrun of OX04 software bugs. Today's learning goals are as follows. First, we want to understand the different attack primitives. Give an example for arbitrary reads, arbitrary write bugs, and so on, just to get an understanding of how the different um, attack primitives map to actual bugs. Distinguish arbitrary and constrained primitives, and be aware of different bug types. So let's dive right in. First, to give you a little bit of a perspective uh, how software bugs map to attack primitives, uh, let me explain these, these parts a bit. Attack primitives, from an attacker's perspective, are the building blocks used in an exploit. Software bugs, or a software bug, maps to an attack primitive, enabling some kind of unintended state modification of the target program as it is executing. An attacker will chain a set of attack primitives together to build an actual exploit. With the exploit, all the underlying bugs used for the attack primitives then become vulnerabilities. So by chaining attack primitives, we can actually have different kinds of state modifications to the target program that then actually um, orchestrate and, and enable the exploit to do state changes to the attacker's choosing which then uh, allows the attacker to execute their intended behavior. And this again depends on the attacker intentions, as in what the attacker wants to achieve with this given program. So a very simple and a very basic attack primitive is the arbitrary write. And here we have a little bit of code at the bottom. We have a global variable called uh, global. It's an array of char of 10 bytes long. Uh, and we have a set function where an index into this global is being used to update the, this, uh, the, the byte at that position is the val. Now, an attacker who can control both index and val can set the any one byte location, plus minus two gigabytes around global to an arbitrary value. As in, the index is never checked to actually be in bounds for this, uh, for this global variable, and we never check the length or the, the, the basis. This is an, an signed integer, so we can go forward and backward in the address space. Therefore, this assignment, global, open parenthesis, uh, index, close parenthesis, equals val, well, allows the attacker to set a given memory location. As in assembly, this will just be a memory write, and the attacker controls where this memory is actually being written to. Okay. Usually it is not as obvious and the, the attacker doesn't have as many uh, primitives and as much control over it. And arbitrary writes often require some kind of, uh, of constraints. Here in this example, again, we have the vulnerable function where the attacker passes a string that is then copied into a local buffer to be compared against a, a target function. An attacker with control over the, the U1 string, the user control string, can overwrite any kind of values on the stack above temp, which ends with a null byte. The null byte will be written implicitly. Now the, the attacker controlled byte array cannot contain anything except, uh, cannot, uh, cannot contain any null bytes, except for when it, when it ends. And uh, the attacker cannot control the location. So this is kind of a, a limited location arbitrary write uh, with any value except for, for null bytes. Right. Let's move right on. Uh, arbitrary reads are kind of the counterpart to arbitrary writes. Here, an attacker uh, can actually leak any arbitrary byte in a two gigabyte uh, offset relative to the address of the global. Right. So this would allow us to leak information from the from the program. And these kind of primitives allow the attacker to uh, stitch together different kind of program parts and then run actual attacks. Now, as you may have guessed, not all the bugs map as clearly to exploit primitives as these simple examples that we just uh, went through. And C++ provides many different kind of opportunities for, for failure, for you to run into these kind of issues, right? So um, there's different kind of bug types, different kind of issues, and there's a, a large variety of uh, of bug types and whatnot. I encourage you to go through through different kind of bug trackers to figure out what the patterns look like. And after some time, you will get some a feeling out of uh, for the different opportunities for, for bugs. 
But let's go through a couple of examples to get you started on this. Uh, a very common bug type is improper initialization. Right? Here in this example, we've got this, this get min function with two parameters, array uh, and a length. And then we want to figure out the minimum of this array. So we iterate through the array and update the minimum dependent on the previous value of minimum. So if the, the current value being read is smaller um, than the, the currently stored minimum, we update the minimum, otherwise we, uh, we continue. All right now the issue here is that the minimum is never initialized. And uh, it will just take the value that was on the stack at this given slot right before this function started executing. Uh, at runtime, this will uh, result in some kind of unintended behavior and a random value may end up in the, the, the minimum that is being reported. An attacker uh, that can control the value on the stack at this position can thereby influence the target program by setting a minimum to their choosing, which is lower than anything that has, uh, is being seen in the, uh, in the real execution. Another bug type is unintended side effects. Here in this code snippet, if foo equals to 12, then we set, uh, if foo does not equal to 12, then we set bar to 13. Now, likely the, the programmer intended to check if foo is 12 or bar is 13, then you would do something. But uh, in C, um, the, equal test is very similar to assignment. And when the target is being evaluated left to right, so if foo is not equal to 12, the second part of the or will be evaluated, which is just an assignment to bar equal 12. And bass will then never be set because uh, this is also a, a typo, which would just return uh, return true. All right, so this is a, uh, these are two bugs in, or two potential bugs in one single line where there's any kind of unintended side effects. Also, when you're calling functions inside of an expression that is being evaluated, any side effect that this function may, uh, may do or may cause will actually linger and will, will not be undone. And um, the, the expressions are only evaluated lazily until you can, the, the compiler can determine true or false. So it goes from left to right and evaluates one step at a time. As, uh, but as soon as it is, it is true or false, then the, the, it, will just, uh, it will just continue, uh, not evaluate the rest. It doesn't need to evaluate. Uh, another common bug type is scoping. Here, the local variable A is assigned while the global variable A is not modified. In this calc function, we have two variables called A. One is a global, another one is a local variable. Uh, we likely intended, or the programmer likely intended to assign a global variable, but uh, the, the local variable shadows the global variable and the global value will not be updated. Therefore, we're missing an update to the global value and it's never being returned. Operator precedence is another common issue. Um, the arrow operator uh, and the dot operator bind more tightly than the dereference. Um, and here, like as, as in any case, parentheses would solve the, the, the problem. Here we've got a, a, just a simple iteration through a, through a linked list, but the issue is that we are not dereferencing the right value and the right offset. Very likely our compiler would complain here, but if we are using old or obscure compilers, this may not be the case and result in any arbitrary, uh, arbitrary error. Control flow, this is a, a very, very common bug type. Um, that many of you will have experienced before. Uh, a rogue semicolon will terminate the current statement in the second loop, and the assignment will only be executed once. All right, so here, if you look at the code below, we are trying to iterate through a two-dimensional array by going through all the x and all the y's. And unfortunately here the, is that the, the inner loop is being terminated with a semicolon, which means that uh, the two loops will just uh, execute until they, they are done. And then the, the, the assignment to the variable will just be executed once, but unfortunately with out of bounds uh, YLAN and XLANs, right? So because we finished iterating to the end of the, of the array, 
And now both X and Y are out of bounds and we'll write to this, this location once due to the stray semicolons. It will only be updated once and out of bounds. Uh, another bug type, control flow. Uh, there, there can be issues with double go-tos, right? So here, uh, there's, a, there's an example where we do an if is bad certificate go to fail to handle error conditions, if invalid certificate go to fail or go to fail. Now this go to fail will be executed unconditionally, skipping over a lot of checking code, right? So this double go to if, the second go to um, in the if invalid case will execute in any case um, and thereby always error out and skip over any of the other code that was intended below. And this actually is the, the very famous go to fail bug in Apple's SSL implementation where they skipped over a large chunk of checking code and thereby accept, accepted a lot of invalid certificates as valid. So this can be extremely dangerous, um, especially as you are, you are jumping over, uh, over checking code. Now, in low level programming languages, like if you look at the, the Linux kernel, which is written to large parts in C, Go-tos are actually fairly common and this pattern of using go to fail to handle common error conditions is extremely prevalent in the kernel because there's no exception mechanism, right? Um, it's one of the big issues in C that we discussed in, in a previous lecture where we said that, hey, for, for safe dialects, we will have, we will require something to handle these kind of uh, unconditional or these weird control flows on error conditions. Now, if you don't have that in, in vanilla C, uh, when you're writing systems code, this may result in, in very dangerous bugs. Another bug type is use after free, where a memory object is used after it has been deallocated. Here again, we've got an example where we allocate a node pointer, we assign it, we free it, and then it is used later on. Um, the memory corruption by itself is not directly, directly obvious and may require uh, further work uh, by building on top of the, uh, for example, of the memory allocator or by overriding certain data structures that are used downstream in the program. This is why this is not just a, uh, a simple example uh, or a, directly a, an exploit primitive in itself, but it requires additional work and modification with the values to turn this into, for example, an, an arbitrary write. So many use after freeze can be turned into arbitrary write primitives, but they do require additional work depending on what can be over it or what can be controlled by the, uh, by the attacker here. Um, type confusion is also pretty common. Uh, type confusion is, uh, is illegal downcasts or invalid downcasts where, for example, in a, in a complex type hierarchy, we cast from a child to a parent class and then from the parent class, we actually cast down to another child class, which is different from the, from the initial child class. So this results in a, in a type violation or a type confusion and uh, may not be checked. Now, the issue here is that um, while child one and child two share the common memory area that parent gives them, but anything that extends parent will be different. So if you're casting from child one to parent, this is perfectly safe as we only use a subset of the memory area that child one defines. But if you go from parent to child two, any of the fields below will be used in a, in a different context and, and potentially out of bounds if the lengths between child one and child two differ, right? So this may result in any kind of uh, memory corruption afterwards beyond the, the, the area of child one. Now, as a quick summary, for uh, these attack, uh, attack primitives. These memory safety bugs allow program state modifications. There are spatial memory safety uh, focuses on bounds, temporal memory safety focuses on locality. There's attack primitives targeting both spatial and temporal memory safety violation. Um, we've looked at, at type safety, which ensures that objects have the correct type. There, there may be issues with type unsafety when you cast from, from different objects and then a uh, large amount of these bug classes leads to different kind of fun vulnerabilities that are being used downstream by the target.